What's going on guys, Ben Brewster here at Trail Athletics. Uh, today I wanna to go over a hang progression for pitchers. Uh, this is something that we've talked about uh, at length before, but in my recent interview with Ben Joyce, I was actually surprised to hear that this is something that he's been doing for a while as well, that he actually credits in part to his velocity increase to 105 miles an hour after getting Tommy John. So really, what is the purpose of hangs? Well, I really see three main benefits to hangs. The first is from a grip strengthening uh, effect. So just getting comfortable in that hang position, it does require a good amount of grip strength. It will build up your grip strength. And we know that a lot of these, these forearm muscles, these forearm flexors, uh, do have a protective uh, function for the medial elbow when throwing. So they help uh, reduce that gapping effect and help uh, oppose the valgus stress uh, during the throw. So there is a protective effect on the UCL from this grip strengthening uh, effect. The second real, real main reason is uh, lat length. So doing these hangs actually does start to open up uh, some of the shoulder flexion. So it starts to actually improve, improve your mobility, stretch out the lat, and be able to get into some of these overhead ranges of motion a little bit smoother. Uh, and so there is really that mobility standpoint. We'll use this in almost a corrective sense uh, sometimes as well. And then the third main impact uh, from doing hangs is it really is actually a shoulder uh, strengthening and a rotator cuff strengthening exercise as well. So at ball release, there's roughly a body weight distraction or distraction force. So as we're throwing, we're literally throwing our arm off our body. We're trying to throw the arm off our body with approximately a body weight force. So that body weight force is trying to pull our arm into traction. With hanging, we're actually training the, the, the rotator cuff and the shoulder to be able to handle a traction force. So if you can think about a single arm hang from a bar, being able to do that for 20 to 30 seconds, you're literally training your shoulder to be able to take your body weight, a body weight force, through the shoulder, through the rotator cuff, and be able to, to hold that. So it's training your shoulder in a much more specific way to how that shoulder has to function uh, at ball release and, and through the follow through uh, in the actual pitching delivery on top of some of the you know basic rotator cuff exercises that everyone already does anyway. So that being said, let's dive into some of the basic progressions and then let's also show you how you progress it over time. For me, the kind of the two checkpoints uh, to work towards are one, being able to hang from a bar with a two arm bar hang for about 90 seconds or so. The other checkpoint would be to work up to about a 30 second a single arm hang over time. This is something that you wanna be a little bit careful about in season doing way too many sets of this uh, because it will fatigue your grip. So for now, I would recommend just sticking to maybe one easy set, open up the shoulder, open up the lats a little bit pre-throwing, uh, and then maybe post-throwing on your high intensity or your game days, uh, hit a couple sets of hangs as well. Uh, off season, you can go a little bit more aggressive, uh, but that being said, let's dive into the four levels of hangs that we do. So the first one is a sideline bar hang. Uh, this is a fairly easy progression because again, it's it's not using all of your body weight, but we're gonna have the palm facing ourself, uh, set up the bar roughly sternum height. And from there, you're just gonna get in a side plank position directly underneath the bar, and you're gonna lift your body up off the ground. Now, this is a good starting progression. Uh, once you can do this for about 30 plus seconds or so, uh, you're more or less ready for the next progression, but uh, this is a fairly low load way to work on this hang position. This is the two arm bar hang. You're gonna go into a squat rack, find a bar somewhere between shoulder width and a little bit wider than shoulder width for the, the grip. And we're gonna do a double overhand grip here. For here, I would drive the ribs down. So as you exhale, think about driving the ribs down, think about tucking the pelvis up underneath you. Uh, that is going to start to open up the lats a little bit more. You wanna think about just relaxing, deep exhales on the way out, keeping the ribs drive down, and again, tucking the pelvis underneath you. Once you can do this for about a minute, you can start kind of playing around with some of the other variations uh, that we'll touch on here in a second. This is the single arm lateral line hang. So we're gonna have a handle, ring, bar, something that's a little bit below our max reach. We're gonna cross that same side leg as the arm we're working on uh, behind, back behind our body. That's gonna really stretch out the entire lateral side all the way from the TFL, the lateral hip, up through the lats and up through the grip. From there, you're gonna to try to give yourself as minimum support from the lower body as possible. And again, just try to sink into as deep a stretch as possible. Try to relax, try to drive the ribs down on every exhale. And again, once you can do this for about a minute, it is kind of self-regulating because you can support yourself as you get fatigued, but just a really good way to strengthen the grip, open up the lats and work on a little bit of arm care at the same time. Level four would be a single arm bar hang. This is something to kind of mess around with and, and play a little bit more in the off season on, just because it's more taxing on the grip. It's fairly advanced. And once you can begin to do a single arm bar hang, I'm just kind of building up from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. A uh, long-term goal here would be to be able to do about 30 seconds for a bar hang. You're gonna have to find something with a decent grip and adding chalk can help as well. But again, we're really working through grip strength, even more so than, than lat length on this one. And again, we talked about those body weight distraction forces at ball release. You are now getting approximately a body weight distraction force 
So being able to build up to 30 seconds on this would kind of be the gold standard, but be careful with this one, especially in season. Let me know down below uh, what you thought and if you have any suggestions for future content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again.